It's October 13. It's October 13. I'm Todd Dunn, and I'm back at Tortuga to do a little bit more work on the hull. In my last video, I showed how I used my electric plane to cut a scarf into one end of this plank, which is the repair piece for the starboard side of the hull, where I cut out some bad wood and removed a butt block. This morning, I cut the matching scarf in the other end. So this is now the right length with matching scarfs on both ends to fit into the hole I cut in the hull where these scarfs will line up with the scarfs I cut into planking on the hull. So what I'm going to do is fit this because the width is not right. Right now it's a little too wide. I'll fit this to the hull by hand planing the edge here, fitting marking, hand planing, etc. back and forth until this is a nice fit. I'll finally carve a caulking bevel on one edge and uh, then we'll drill it and glue it in place. When I finish doing that, I'm going to come back over here where yesterday I cut out the upper punky plank edge that I needed to repair and I cut and glued in my plank edge repair piece. And right now it's got two temporary fasteners here just are there to hold the ends in while the epoxy cures. It's cured enough now so I can take those out. So I'll do that. I'll use some of the thickened epoxy that's left over to fill the holes left by those screws. And then I am going to glue bungs into these holes over the permanent fasteners. And when that epoxy cures, I'll be ready for the next stage, which is to fare this in to the hull. Okay, let's get going. Okay, I've taken this over and put it on the hull, and I've marked it for the first passes with the plane. And I have quite a bit of wood to take off. I think I might uh, do my first pass with the skill saw rather than the hand plane, because I have about 3 16 of an inch of wood, and that's going to take a lot of passes with the hand plane. So let me get the skill saw and we'll make a quick cut on the line I just did and then we'll plane it. Okay I've got my skill saw out so I am ready to make my first cut and because of how my skill saw is set up I'll make the cut from this end. There's the first cut. So what I'm going to do is just go test fit this. I got a little bit I left there. I'll just trim that off with the hand plane. A couple passes with the hand plane and that will disappear. So I'll go test fit this and see how much more I have to take off. Okay. Just a little bit to come off this end. Just going to be a few passes here. Hand plane is a much more precise tool than the skill saw. So I can uh, I wonder if this will cut better the other way. Time to go do another test fit. Okay, it's getting close. Shouldn't take too much more. And I'm going to carry these cuts down the full length just to give me a little bit better surface. Yeah, I 
think that's going to be pretty close, so I'll test it again. Okay, it does fit, but it's a little tight on the top on this end, so I'm just going to take a little wood off there. Should be pretty close. We'll go test it. Okay, I've got a nice snug fit now. So what I'm going to do now is put the caulking bevel on this edge. The caulking bevel is already there on the top edge of the plank below. So that is just to take a little bit of a an edge off here to make room for caulking hook. with the plane at a slight angle to the top surface to put my caulking bevel in. And this, as I said, is just to make room for caulking cotton. I don't want to do the full thickness of the plank. That looks pretty good right now. So at this point, I have marked this for where I want to drill for fasteners. So that is the next step. I'm finished fitting. Okay, I've got six holes to drill here, so it's pretty straightforward. Just have to see where I marked them. And I'm drilling these 3 16 because I am using number 12 screws. The holes out here in the middle of the scarf are simply to draw the scarf down, and they will be deepened after the epoxy cures. In other words, I'm not going to put the full counter in there. Okay. That's done. Okay, now I just have to countersink these. I'm just putting enough of a countersink here so that the screw head will bear nicely. And here I'm countersinking with enough depth to fit a bum. There we go. And just enough. go. And these are number 12 by one and three quarter stainless steel screws. I'm using stainless steel because I'm above the water line and I don't really have to worry about galvanic corrosion. If I was down below the water line, I would not use stainless because the boat is fastened with bronze to one plank above the water line and then above that it's fastened with stainless which is perfectly fine as long as there's no conducting medium to cause electrolytic corrosion. So I just put these in. And now I'm just going to go and do one more test bit to make sure this really is good. And then I'm going to get the epoxy out. Now that everything fits 
I'm ready to do the actual installation. So, like I did with this piece, I'm going to start by painting both scarf surfaces on the plank and on the boat with unthickened epoxy. Again, so that epoxy will not soak in from the thickened epoxy that I'll put in here. Okay, just paint it on there. Being fairly liberal because I'd like any epoxy that's going to to soak in from this application. So this is pretty simple. Put it on there. All right. Now, it's really dark on the other side of the boat because it's overcast today. And I don't think I can film over there, so what I'm going to do is go paint the epoxy on over there. Now, while this epoxy is soaking in, I'm going to thicken the remaining epoxy. So, once I get this properly thickened to where I want it, so it has some gap filling properties, but not, but is not completely thick. I'm going to use it to set bungs in the wood that I installed on this side of the boat over the four permanent fasteners. I think I've got to get that to a good level. Let me adjust the camera so you can see what I'm doing up here. Okay, here we go. So, I've got bungs cut. So what I'm going to do is simply coat each bung with a little epoxy around the outside, but not on the end because I do not want epoxy to fill the end of the fastener. Stick it in the hole and rotate it a little. It's the countersink I have right now makes holes that are slightly too big for the bungs that I have that I've been cutting. So that's why I'm thickening the epoxy a little bit. And there we go. And it's pretty straightforward. Now I'm not going to set bungs on the other side because I'll have to thicken the epoxy to my full working thickness, uh, thickness for scarfing uh, before I put the fasteners in and it'll be too thick to do this. Okay, that. I'm down a little and the last one. Now I cut my own bungs. Just have a bung cutter that I put in the uh, drill press at home and cut. It's pretty straightforward. In we go. And you see I don't need to tap these. They went full depth without being tapped so there was no reason to do that. So what I need to do now is go over to the other side of the boat and paint the scarf surfaces with thickened epoxy. So I got to thicken this epoxy up a little bit more and then do that. Turn the camera off while I clean my hands up so I don't get uh, guck all over everything. Okay, as you can see, it's pretty dark over here. So what I'm going to do now is coat these scarf surfaces with a layer of thickened epoxy. I'm just using a putty knife to do this. So that I get a reasonable thickness, but not too thick. And I've already drilled the lead holes for the fasteners. Now they'll get filled with thickened epoxy at this stage, but they're still there and I can uh, easily run a drill uh, screw into them. Take a little bit more right there to kind of fill this low spot. Okay, so that side is done. 
and we'll come over and do the other side. Any excess epoxy I have, I will put on here just to get a good coating so that it will fill any irregularities between the scarf on the boat and the scarf on the plank. I'm making an effort not to get any epoxy on the plank edges, but someone's going to squeeze out there and tend to glue those two planks together anyway. So one of the things I'll have to do is probably use my oscillating saw to uh, separate those if I decide I ever want to take this apart again, which I hope I won't have to do. Get a little extra on here. Try to fill that. I use up the epoxy that I have. I'm not too concerned with this feather edge here because although I'd like it to bond, it doesn't really provide any strength there. So I'll put the last little bit on here, then we'll bring the plank over and fasten it. Now because I've drilled lead holes in the frame, frames and uh, here and here, I've got reference marks on the hull and on the plank so it goes on in the right place so the holes will line up. Okay, here we go. It should do it. So, I'll go get the plank and we'll do the actual install. Okay. I've got the plank here, and we'll set it in place, we'll line up my reference lines, right there and there. And I'm going to start by running in the two fasteners in the middle to draw that down, then I'll do the ends. And these fasteners at the ends are pretty much in the middle of the scarf joint, so they will tend to suck the scarf joint down on the plank against the scarf joint that's on the hull. To get the last two fasteners out. And after the epoxy kicks, I'm going to pull out these end fasteners countersink the holes deep enough for bungs and then uh, put them back in and bung the holes. So here we go. And I drew that down nicely. And that's down nicely. Good. Okay, those are down, and I think I'm uh, at this point, finished. So what I'll do is let this epoxy kick. I might put a little bit more in here just to kind of make sure it's filled. This end's much better. This end is 
a little proud right there. Alternatively, well, there's not much wood here, so I might drill a hole and stick another fastener right about here to try and pull this down a little bit. But that's sort of neither here nor there. We'll get that done. So here we go. The hull is repaired with a scarfed in joining piece connecting this plank to this plank and getting rid of the bad wood and the butt block that was in here. So without a butt block, water that drips down the hull won't have any place to accumulate and keep the planking wet and uh, cause rot. At least that's the theory. So time to get going with one more thing. The last thing I'm going to do today is back these two temporary screws out and fill these holes with thickened epoxy. There we go. I might use these screws on the other side to draw that end down a little bit. So let's put a little thickened epoxy in there. I've got just a little bit left. Should be plenty to fill these holes. Okay, I'm going to go and just make sure that any squeeze out is uh, not going to cause any problems on the other side. And this repair is done for today. So, it, so anyway, as of today, October 13, I have now repaired these two punky plank edges and removed punky wood on the other side and installed a joining piece that's scarfed in on both ends to uh, replace bad wood and a butt block. And that's all there is to it. So time to uh, end the video. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you haven't, please subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and don't forget to click that notification bell. Thanks again for watching.